southern hemisphere trying to jump from uh, continent to continent mapping it out on Google Maps and then mapping it out on the flat earth map and realizing that the flat earth map showed the routes to make sense and the Google Maps didn't and the way they were trying to hide these ridiculous routes was with fake flights fake non-stop flights that aren't real and you can't get this video will just focus on some of the changes that took place since then like fair compare had to change their website and their flight search format that happened like a couple weeks after the video came out um, also some of the non-stops that they had out there disappeared from the searches um, as they were trying to figure out what to do I'm sure sometimes they were in the searches sometimes they weren't um, and then also now they've added some new uh, fake flights so I'll go over those and yes even though uh, it was a daily fight with shills and uh, it wasn't fun. <laughs> I blocked over a hundred of them so far. Daily fight for two months, still happening. Uh, because this is a huge lie. And uh, they're trying to keep this one a secret. And this lie in particular uh, really pissed off a lot of people. Uh, including a lot in the airline industry. Because this lie is one of the big ones propping up the flat earth lie and this lie exposes the flat earth a lot faster than people are ready to have it exposed uh, including a lot of flat earthers and I'll probably make another video on that another time proof where is your proof how many times did I hear that uh, proof is in the logic first of all if you know the earth is flat like I do then logically these are not real flights but I know people need more proof than that um, besides the actions that I've seen on this video since then which also prove it to me but here's how we get real proof and expose it calling out to friends in the southern hemisphere we need your help show up to these airports and look for the gate of these fake flights and I bet you won't find one and if you do find one I bet there won't be a plane pulling up or any people lining up for it because uh, they can fake these flights to a certain extent but they can't fake it that far so let's expose it let's expose fake flights and the flat earth the seatbelt sign is on! first please make sure that your seatbelt is securely fastened Seatbelts can be purchased for $5. <laughs> to fasten, insert the metal fitting into the buckle and tighten the buckle by pulling the loose end away from you. To release, purchase a release flap for $7. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. We've never paid for seatbelts before. Once we've reached our cruising altitude, your flight attendant may or may not go down the aisle with snacks. If she chooses to, each passenger will be given a single peanut. All right, this is Expedia, and it's a Sydney to Santiago search. And I can show you that every single one of these options on this page, which is 15 or 16, um, is fake. So we know this one is fake. This one is the nonstop from Sydney to Santiago Qantas 27 sometimes it shows up in the search sometimes it doesn't this one is fake it used to only be available three days a week now it's available I think four days a week or so it says but this one is fake 12 hours and 40 minutes for um, for that flight nope you think after all these years someone would listen to it? Airport management, the FAA, and the airlines. Oh, cheats and liars. All right, let's get out of here. The flat Earth is the biggest lie of all time. And they've kept it going for hundreds of years now. And the way they do that is 
uh, with a lot of supporting lies. And one of the supporting lies has to be fake flights. And I can tell you right now that makes them nervous because this exposes the flat earth faster than they know it's about to be exposed. So how far would they go to make you believe that these uh, non-stop flights are actually real? Um, well, this is how far they'll go. It was a colorful start for QF Flight 28 to Santiago, with Chilean dancers performing their national dance at Sydney Airport, giving passengers on the plane an exciting send-off for the 13-hour non-stop journey to this new Qantas destination. And guess who was there to meet them on arrival? Good morning. Yes, none other than John Travolta, the airline's ambassador at large in his pilot's uniform. Even workers on the ramp strained to get a look at the famous actor, who later spoke at a packed media conference. The two wonderful countries being able to come together uh, with one flight, a non-stop flight from Sydney to Santiago, simple, simple trip. So, that one is fake, and every single other one of these ones is fake also. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. Uh, no matter what the first part does, um, because all these flights eventually take off from Auckland and go to Santiago, and that we've already uh, shown is a fake flight. Um, you can't do it. So, uh, all you really need to see, this is that 11 hour, 20 minute flight for 6,000 miles, supposedly. Um, but not on the flat earth map. All you need to know is that this is the same flight that's going to Auckland, 4.15 to 12.35, and you can see that all of these flights end at 12.35 no matter what the stops. This one goes through Brisbane first so is this one Melbourne first so those parts can be real I'm saying the Auckland to Santiago portion is not real and see they're all so all of these flights right here on this page are fake so whatever happens, I'm sure you try to book one and it says, oh, jeepers, nothing's available. Here's your next option to either Vancouver, San Francisco, or L.A. It's an entirely different kind of flying, altogether. It's, it's an, an entirely, entirely different, different kind of flying. flying. Here's flight 800. This is the uh, one that I'm talking about, the Auckland, 6,000 miles, Auckland to Santiago. Supposedly leaving every single day. Now there's another flight. Flight 1316 wasn't in the first video. Now it's a new flight, supposedly. But I'll show you, they just copied this flight. So it's just a, another fake flight. <coughs> you can look here. Um, 415 departure time. Every single day of the week. So they both leave at the exact same time. Except for this one. <laughs> This one gets there in 10 hours and 15 minutes, and this one gets there in 11 hours and 20 minutes. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious, and don't call me Shirley. So, yeah, this one, same jet, same seats, all that stuff. So, now they're just getting sloppy. Uh, so now there's two fake ones, and you can see that Flight 27 didn't come up. We can close these up and I'll show you that there's no non-stop in this. So interesting. And here's your dead giveaway. The Auckland flights, these are the two fakes, 813, 16, 7,337 miles. Your next options, double. And 
it goes all the way to 15.7. So you're either flying, there's one flight that takes you to San Francisco, then Houston, and then to Santiago. There's two different flights to LA that either take you to Atlanta or Houston, and then Santiago. And then there is what? Uh, one flight to Vancouver, and then you have uh, a couple of different options, but... I can take much more of this. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit amphetamines. Shana, they bought their tickets. They knew what they were getting into. The last time the flight is delayed! All right, here we are, Johannesburg to Perth. And I've opened up all the real flights. Um, but we'll go over the fake ones. This one is real to Singapore. Uh, and here's the flat earth map that I used uh, to map out the Johannesburg to Perth flights. And this flight right here from Johannesburg to Singapore to Perth. Almost a straight line and it's 7,800 miles. So that's where I'm getting that 5161 cannot be a real flight. Also all these Sydney flights are fake. They disappeared from the search altogether the other day but they're back today. Um, it's almost a straight shot on the flat earth map from Johannesburg to Singapore to Perth. And this is 7,803 miles. So it's close to 8,000 miles not 5,161. So this flight right here, 280, South African Airlines, is a fake. And that was in the first video. Do you see a plane out there? Do you? Huh? We are not going anywhere until there is a plane out there. <laughs> um, you'll see a lot of these QF-64, Qantas-64. All of those are fake. Uh, those are all to Sydney. The first flight is to Sydney, 6.10 p.m. You'll see all of them are leaving at this time. So whatever the rest of the flight is, doesn't matter because the first flight part is fake. So this is a fake listing. <clears throat> Chicken or fish? Chicken or fish! You see they're listing it at uh, even the one stop, 88.82, which is only one mile less than the two stop. Amazing. Uh, but yeah, um, this flight to Dubai, real, and that is 9,597 miles, Johannesburg, Dubai, Perth, and this one is to Abu Dhabi International, and this one's real too, but all the Q6, QF-64s are fake because this first part of the flight, Quanta 64, 6,847 miles. Uh-uh. A lot longer than that. And all the Sydney flights weren't even on the search the other day, about two or three days ago. Uh, today they are. So, yep, there you have it. And you can see I'm not using any dates in this search, so that way it pulls up everything. And I'll show you. I've got everything checked over here, so any flight, any stop, these are all the different airports. Alright, well thanks for tuning in, and uh, cheers to all the new subscribers, uh, welcome aboard. I kind of took a break there for a while, chalked that up to partially summer finally hitting where I live and also being a little overwhelmed by one video I made in particular <laughs> and now I must be a glutton for punishment making another but <clears throat> along those lines I'm not going to argue about anything really um, you can do your own research to find out about the flat earth there's a lot of great videos out there made by other folks um, and that's how I learned about it
When I first heard this flat earth subject, I dismissed it without even giving it a second thought. But more recently, at the beginning of 2015, I ran across a few flat earth videos again. And while looking into the fake moon photos circulating around, I saw that people were claiming that the images from Earth from space were fake as well. Pretty soon, the flat earth subject became viral online. And after looking at the Apollo missions one night and coming to the conclusion that they were nothing more than a huge con game, it jarred my memory about something. And for a very specific reason, I decided to look deeply into the flat earth without just dismissing it blindly as so many do. Why did I look into it this time? Well, I do pray for knowledge and wisdom and discernment, but maybe the recent Apollo footage I watched helped. However, I live near a very large lake, Lake Ontario, and I happen to remember going to the beach as a kid and looking across the lake and seeing New York State coast off in the distance. I never ever thought anything about it ever, except I remember it being there when I went to the beach. Now, I've been to that beach a hundred times over the years, and once this topic gained more prominence in early 2015, the first video I saw explained the curvature of the Earth and what it's supposed to be in inches per mile. And it resonated with me because I remember that I could see clear across the lake to the other coast, something that broke all the sphere Earth rules. So with NASA fakery on my mind and the memory of seeing this coastline that supposedly was too far below the horizon for me to be able to see it due to the curvature of the Earth, I re-examined the flat Earth theory. And as unbelievable as it seems, it started to make a lot of sense, especially since I did distinctly remember being able to see that far coast basically any time I was at my local beach. And as I've said, I've been there hundreds of times over the years. But even so, I went back to the beach recently and stood at the shore. I looked south and guess what? I could see the New York State coastline just like I remember. Now I googled the distance and it was approximately 36 miles. I learned what the curvature of the Earth is supposed to be exactly at that distance. And according to the people that believe in the sphere, and I found out that the coast should have been buried below my ability to see it by almost 900 feet. That part of the New York State coast had a top elevation of less than 300 feet. So that left at least a huge 600 foot discrepancy. And even more because I could see some of the height of the far shore. Was something really wrong with the reality that they've been selling us ever since we were born? Well, I ended up becoming a little fixated on proving or disproving the concept. And at first, I truly thought disproving the flat earth would be rather easy. I thought there had to be a reasonable explanation why I could see so far beyond the so-called curved barrier. I learned about light refraction and superior mirages. I learned about perspective and horizons. I learned about how our eyes work. I viewed dozens of similar experiences on YouTube. I listened to experts and people who thought they had logical but spherical explanations. In fact, I tried for a few months to debunk the concept and just couldn't. The more I looked into it, the more sense it made and the less likely that the sphere model we've been spoon-fed since birth was a reality. It's just flat out wrong. And as more people shared their experiences and proofs online, it only added to my growing, pretty much unwavering belief that the world is not what we've been told. And learning about how our eyes work and how perspective work helps a lot with understanding sunrises and sunsets and ships disappearing hull first at sea and other supposed sphere earth proofs. I can't say for certain what shape the earth is or how big it is, or if there's an Antarctic ring or a barrier beyond it, or if it's an infinite plane. Maybe everything we theorize is not complete. There are so many possibilities that it blows the mind, and the flat earth has no real complete standard model because it's all based on us finding out things for ourselves. We agree on the facts and certain basics, but the rest is only hypothetical even if it seemingly makes sense. And as the evidence mounts for both the flat earth and against the sphere, I wanted to create a special place where folks can learn and share what they've learned with other supporters. Differences of opinion are certainly going to come forth and should be expressed openly. But remember that the goal of my videos and their corresponding threads is to provide the opportunity to use each of us to learn and grow in any area that any of us has a problem in. If there is a thing you can't understand, then ask. Someone will have an opinion and we can go from there. If you have a point to make against what is considered an accepted flat earth fact, please provide any relevant links or supporting proofs or videos. I am currently under the impression that the entire space program, even the low Earth orbit and all that is there, is really just a sleight of hand trick by a group of illusionists that have swindled the public, the governments of the world, the media, and us into believing a lie. Everybody, a small group of corporations and cabals have almost complete control over the entire financial, educational, high-level governmental and media systems, leaving it up to real armchair scientists and normal people that can critically think and recreate experiments themselves to Whatever, I do what I want.
It's like we're living in a cage with invisible walls The wicked zeitgeist of life making grown men crawl On their knees begging please save us from the boogeymen Funded by the CIA funnel through Arabian banks Like a shank to the neck They hit you from the back, no sweat Ho check and watch it shake And take away your freedom, you really don't need them When you're tucked away safe and protected by FEMA Then you must be a dreamer like the great pretender As the second amendment, why I'll never surrender But I'll never plead a fifth when it comes to September I'ma yell it from the roof and expose the agenda yeah. Time to wake up and open your eyes to the matrix This is going out to the truth as a patriot Living free and dying hard, speaking through battle scores Astronauts to the moon Hell yeah Hell yeah Nine, ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one Welcome to reality What's going on everyone? It's Jaronism, back with another video for you today. Wanted to talk a little bit about Antarctica. So recently, uh, someone who has been studying Flat Earth decided to look down into Antarctica and he found out some things that he did not know. Because I've been concentrating on Antarctica, I started looking into it. I never really had the compunction to uh, investigate Antarctica before. So I guess he had done months of searching and studying Flat Earth, but never got around to looking into Antarctica. So he says, It's the first time I've really looked into these maps. And it seems that everybody, including the Royal Tub Thumping Brass Band, has marched through Antarctica and the Flat Earthers don't know about it. As soon as he did, he saw that flights took place that go across it. He saw New Year's Eve parties. He saw tourists. And so he came to the conclusion that any good researcher would have come to that all the Flat Earth researchers are stupid or they're lying. That's a good conclusion, huh, mate? Well, let me fill you in on a little research on Antarctica that I did. And maybe if you're the good Christian that you say you are, Tiger Dan, you'll apologize for calling me stupid and a liar and anything else that you said. But uh, I've actually done tons of research, just like all of the other Flat Earthers that I know of have been looking at this stuff for a long time. And we simply didn't search for something on YouTube, and then claim it to be a fact. That's not good research. Um, so I'm going to show you some different things about Antarctica, so hopefully you see the difference between good research and just typing something into YouTube and saying, oh, there's the proof. Anybody can go to Antarctica because these people say they've been there. So let's begin. The Antarctic doesn't exist and that it's the outer perimeter of this flat Earth. It's nonsense. It's it's foolishness, and uh, I, I'm ashamed to have gone along with it because uh, this is the first time that I'm looking into this. It is not foolishness. Believing what you see or read without doing any more further research, that is what foolishness is. As far as my research goes, it is certainly not a continent. That is the conclusion you will come to if you only do basic research. A little in-depth research will reveal the truth, and that's why I'm here. So, first thing we should pay attention to, you'll notice that the planes have a peculiar thing missing. Windows. So, when do you want to fly people to a certain location and not have them look out the windows, unless you are fooling them about where they are flying? Let's look at the Mercator map on the screen now, the projection. Um, what happens if you travel west from America? You'll pop out on the other side, correct? Um, over by Japan. Now, what happens if you travel north? Do you pop out the bottom? If you travel south, do you pop out the top? No, you don't. So, interesting little tidbit of information there. Keep that in your mind. The point that you made that I found concerning was you said that it must be a continent because people build huts there and the news goes there. And the news also went to San Bernardino, um, and that wasn't a real event. And the news also went to Sandy Hook. That wasn't a real event, and people can build huts anywhere. Why would they not be able to build them on the outer edge of the flat earth? I don't understand your research or your line of reasoning, but uh, let's move on and get into these cruises into Antarctica. First of all, you can see on the screen here that they all go to these ports only. So you'll see that that is a very small section of a gigantic continent where people would all assemble and all the little cruise ports would be there. So that's very interesting. 
And a lot of people like me have been working very hard to figure out what is going on um, in Antarctica. And so what I did was I wanted to go ahead and look into booking myself a little cruise. But what they don't do is patrol the entire Antarctica because anybody can go there. And what I find utterly um, stupid is the fact that there's literally tens of thousands of people moving over Antarctica every single week. So the first thing I will do is uh, show you why not everyone can go there. And the second thing is I don't usually call people liars, so I'm just going to ask for your evidence uh, in claiming that tens of thousands of people fly across Antarctica every week. That's what you said. So show me the proof of flying across Antarctica. If you look up any flight charts, they don't fly across the continent at all. So show your evidence on that one. On the screen now, you'll see why not everyone can go to Antarctica. Because not everyone has between forty dollars and $75,000 for a five or six day trip. So I'm on this site. It's called polarcruises.com. I'm looking at all their little deals and it looks like a scam to me because um, you don't need that kind of money for a trip to Antarctica. So anybody charging you $45,000 to $75,000 for a five-day trip where you're staying in a tent and peeing in a bucket, uh, there's a problem there. So I also looked up and tried to find out how many people fit on one of these planes, and they usually have 66 uh, people on the plane. And if you multiply that by the ticket price of 40000 you get uh, about $3 million. So this is where I start to smell scam. Um, to make that kind of money is not... Uh, necessary on upcharging that much. So the first thing I did was run the site through Whoisology. Really cool site if you're looking for the owner of a site or IP information, registrar information. And when I found it, I got some other interesting news. He owns over 150 other related domains besides polarcruises.com. In fact, look at all these. This travel agency or scam center I have all the Antarctic and Arctic trips in their hands. You must go through them. So that was just more fuel to my fire. Sites like penguincruise.com, Antarctica Cruise, Antarctica Tour, Antarctica Trip, Polar Bear Cruises, Antarctic Voyage, Antarctic Journey, Antarctica Journeys, Arctic Voyages, Antarctic Tour, Antarctic Vacations, Antarctic Vacations with a hyphen, Antarctic trip, Antarctic adventures, Antarctica cruise. So, as you can see, he definitely has the corner on the market. Next up was to find out, are they even in business? Or is it an all-out scam? So I searched for reviews on other sites. Obviously not their own site where they could make whatever review they want, but on other sites. First review I find uh, is the review right here. Uh, Polar Cruises reviews. Maybe this is too late to help you, but here's our experience with Polar Cruises. They were very helpful at the beginning when we first called about a cruise. They told us there was only one cabin left on the cruise that we were interested in and that there was a waiting list for it, which upon looking back doesn't make sense. Why sell it to us if there's a waiting list already? But we went ahead, paid the deposit, and wired the balance. Fifteen days before departure of the cruise, an unexpected medical issue emerged and we couldn't make the cruise. We had no trip cancellation insurance, big mistake, and immediately called Polar Cruises. After some delay, Polar Cruises told us that Oceanwide Expeditions, the ship's operator, would allow a name change for the cabin, that is, find someone else to take the cabin, but we had just 24 hours to do this, and that if we couldn't find anyone, to call them immediately to cancel our booking, but with zero refund. We asked if they could help us, given the extensive contacts they have, but they didn't even reply to this appeal and did absolutely nothing to help. We then called Oceanwide Expeditions and said 24 hours was too little, and to do anything, after this call, Polar Cruises then informed us that uh, we had a few more days to do the name change. One question that still remains is why Polar Cruises had given us a 24-hour deadline if we were not going to get any refund from Polar Cruises or Oceanwide anyway. In sum, our experience with Polar Cruises was not a good one, and I would never recommend them. So you're talking about probably the theft of $25,000. Just a guess right there. Uh, who knows how much the trip was for? Could have been 70000 could have been 10000 I don't know. But I was on the right track. Um, there's a problem with taking a cruise down in Antarctica. 
Now, I hope you are ready for this story to get a little bit juicy. Um, thanks for holding on so far, because it's about to get real interesting. So, in looking at the page here that lists the employees, I'd already looked up Jim, couldn't find anything. He's the one who owns all the domains. Um, I looked up Sharon, couldn't find much. Again, both Jim and Sharon have very uh, non-unique names. Uh, but Chuck and his wife, um, Lynn, were easy to find. Here you're looking at Chuck Cross. He is a, uh Antarctic polar um, expedition leader, so it says. So is his wife. But they only have one photo of themselves all online. So, I mean, if you can search Google. I did here in a second. You'll see it on the screen. Um, and that even putting her name and Bend, Oregon, where they supposedly live, uh, turns up just that one photo and only articles um, that look like they come from their site or are in regards to uh, them being travel agents. You can see here just that one picture up at the top. So that left me with one other person. And I looked her up, and I always thank my lucky stars when I see somebody with a unique name. They're usually easy to find online. Her name is Nina Spinrad. So here it talks about her being an outdoor lover. And so I began to search Spinrad, Nina, and I get a ton of results for a Dr. Richard W. Spinrad. Who is he? Well, he was named in 2014 as the NOAA Chief Scientist by Barack Obama. Then I see Mr. Spinrad was the president of research at Oregon State before his appointment as head of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Research Center. And, of course, we know that this travel agency is based in Oregon. So, prior to that, he was the research director for the U.S. Navy. He also is part of the global warming lie, as he is a direct and permanent representative to the United Nations Intercontinental Oceanographic Commission. He has been given awards from Bush and Obama, and now there's no way that this Nina is related to him, right? So I found a obituary for a Gene Thompson. And if you're ever looking for relationships, the best place to go is obituary since it spells it right out for you. And in Gene Thompson's obituary, he was survived by his daughter, Elena, and her husband, Dr. Richard Spinrad, and their son, Gary, and his wife, Nina Spinrad. So for those of you following along, we now have one company who owns all the domains for Arctic and Antarctic trips. It has five employees, one of them is the daughter-in-law of the head honcho and President Barack Obama's selection for chief scientist for the NOAA. So that means we have a Navy veteran, a military man, who has taken a military oath in charge of the ocean as chief scientist, just like all of our scientists who went to the moon, who are on the ISS or are currently or former military. Worth noting, if you spend... 10, 20, 30 years in the military, and then you get honorable discharge or you leave or retire, you're then considered a civilian. So if you become an astronaut, you are a civilian astronaut. So when we look closely, we can see that, honestly, most of what we think of as science has been militarized. Also wanted to point out, if you look at the screen now, you'll see I did some flight tracking, um, and I don't see any planes that are going anywhere near the Antarctic landmass, which really only makes sense when you think of Antarctica being the ring around the flat plain. If it were a giant continent on the bottom of a globe, why wouldn't we be crossing it to go from Australia to South America, etc.? And flat earthers just don't seem to know about this. And they think that Antarctica doesn't exist and that it's, it's a military manned base and they don't allow anybody in there. Well, anybody can go to Antarctica and the one good thing that's come out of me investigating this is the fact that it's exposed a lot of these flat earth liars and they don't go out there patrolling all round Antarctica. That's just stupid. And, and the most stupid thing of all is that some of these flat earthers think that Antarctica doesn't exist. I just don't get how dumb flat earthers are. I mean, you have a simple choice. Either Earth is spinning a thousand miles per hour, or it's not. Either it travels 21 million miles a day, or zero. Stars are either trillions of miles away, or they're lights in the sky. All that HD footage confirms NASA's in space doing great things, or they're just stealing our money. It's really sad that these guys are so intellectually stupid that they believe their own eyes. <laughs> I mean, their own senses. Not me. I know where truth lies lies in the textbooks provided and written by Freemason Jesuits who want a better life for me and my family 
They want me to give them a run for their money, to challenge them and beat them in this game of life. Thank non-God for science. So, I wanted to talk a quick minute about GPS, and sorry for my scribbles, but hopefully this will help you understand a little better. If the map on the left was the correct map, and we needed people to think that they are on a globe, then you would put ground-based tracking everywhere. So let's call that those red sticks on the map on the left. Then, when someone stands, say, at the three dots in South America, then it would coincide with our GPS, or Global Positioning System, which would be the three dots on the right. We could just say that those three dots were being tracked by big metal satellites orbiting above your head, when in actuality they were ground-based stations. Now, if someone thinks that they are going from, say, South America to Antarctica on the right, they would actually be just doing the same thing as we see on the left. Same thing with Australia. Going from Australia to the South Pole would look the same way on the left as on the right. And as people fly around the world, the GPS simply tells them where they're going. So even though you're just doing a big circle, the GPS makes you think you're on a globe. So, I did find some flights that leave Australia, head down, and they say they cross the South Pole, turn around, and return. So, from the three places in Australia where these planes leave, all would take 12 hours, according to the site, but all distances are 8,000 miles plus. If they were truly going to the 90-degree mark at the South Pole, well, 8,000 miles in 12 hours is 666 miles per hour, and the top speed of a 747 jet is 550 miles per hour. So, this means you simply do not actually go to the 90 degree mark. Also, the plane has 366 seats with an average price of about $3,000. So, $3,000 times 366 is well over a million dollars. The plane uses 36,000 gallons per 10 hours of flight. So, I'll even give them 60,000 gallons uh, for their 12 hour flight, charging $250 a gallon, and that's the price of gas in California. That's $150,000. So, off a million dollar take, they spend 150000 on gas, pretty nice profit to fly in a circle. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, problems with the globe are becoming too much for people to even ignore. Let's look back at the midnight sun now. This is a big issue. Based on current cosmology, if the Earth is a ball, then the North Pole and the South Pole have to be the complete same but opposite, when one is facing the sun versus when the other is facing the sun. For example, Norway gets all-day sun from April through August, and that's 400 miles from the 60-degree marker north. Well, if that's true, then if the Earth is a ball, the same areas opposite must be getting the same no sun in the south on the same days. Well, webcams will clearly show that it is quite a bit different in Antarctica than it is in the north. For instance, the north may get all-day sun, while the south is still getting a little bit of sun, when they should be getting nothing but darkness. I'll show some webcams to prove this point. So the first question you might ask is of course, well, what is the midnight sun and where can we see it? And if we take a look at the answers we get from Yahoo's answers.com, which I'm sure has nothing but the truth, right? It says, what months is Antarctica in total darkness? And they answer, oh, Antarctica is in total darkness all of September, October, November, December, January, February, and most of March. Well, this person didn't realize that that is the summer for the South, and they're not in all darkness for those months. It's ridiculous. So we'll look a little bit lower where we get NASA's answer. We know NASA never lies to us. NASA says that Antarctica has six months of darkness and six months of summer, and that the sun only rises and sets one time a year. That is complete and total bullshit. We'll see that in webcam footage in a minute. You'll see a little bit lower than their post is a post about the myth of the midnight sun because it's a myth. That's exactly why. And I've said this many times. If somebody's lying to you, there's a reason, right? So we're lied to as kids about the polar sun or the midnight sun in the south and the midnight sun in the north. If it's a lie, there's a reason behind it. Wouldn't you agree? Now you'll see here there's a letter from somebody who works down at the Antarctic and she's explaining when she gets to see the sun and she says, of course, the same thing, that she sees six months of sun and six months of darkness. Simply not true. We'll look at webcam footage, which proves it. And she even says at the end, do you know why we get this? Well, it's because the Earth goes around the sun in 365 days. That completes a year. 
Okay, now we're gonna look at some webcam footage. And from this, we should be able to figure out really easily that Antarctica can't possibly be a continent on the bottom of a globe. I wanted to point this out. If you do see a black circle appear over the center of the sun, this article says that on occasion, because of the brightness of the center of the sun, it will mess up the image sensors on the camera, which creates a black dot right in the center of the sun. You can believe that if you want. I'll leave that up to you. If somebody researches it though, there's probably some good information that you could find as to why we are seeing a black dot in the middle of the sun when it crosses the view of the camera. So we're gonna be looking at four different stations. Uh, the first one is Palmer, and that's right there. The second station we're looking at is Casey, and that is on the other side over here. That's one of the Australians' bases. Uh, the next one is Davis Station, and we can see that one right here. And then out on the island, we have, um, I'm sorry, no, this one here is Scott Base, another Australian one. And then out on the island, we have McMurdo, which is near Shackleton's Hut. So this is a webcam footage, and I will show you wherein lies the lie. So you see the sun come and go from your upper right to your upper left. And let's watch the shadow of the stick that's straight in front of us. So the kind of green one straight ahead. Let's watch, keep an eye on that shadow, and you'll notice that the camera simply resets. So here comes the shadow towards us. Whoop. Why don't we get to see the shadow go around? Notice that the shadow of the green flag is coming around, but we never see it go in front of the green flag. Why is that? Because the sun isn't going around the continent. If it was, we would see the sun go around, then it would be behind us. If the sun was behind us, the shadow of the green flag would be in front of it. But that never happens. What happens is the sun is coming in from the northeast, coming across the horizon and going off to the northwest. You can even watch the sky. If you watch the sky, you'll see it is circling northeast to northwest, not circling around us. Again, if it was going around us, we would see that flag pointing straight forward. And you'll see um, that there's definitely an issue with what we're taught. One of the easiest ways to prove that also is the amount of time that it would get all day sun or all day night versus the North Pole. And we've got people who live near the North Pole in Norway, in Alaska, in Canada, and those people can tell us what they see. And what they see does not match the opposite down in Antarctica. Meaning if in the North Pole they're getting four months of full sun, then at that exact time, the South Pole should be getting four months of full no sun. Doesn't happen. At the most, they get six weeks. So it simply means we don't live on a globe. Now you'll notice here that they start when the sun starts getting really low, they'll actually blow a fog or a smoke or a could be even snow. I don't even know what they're blowing, but you'll see if you look straight ahead that there's a blower that blows along the horizon. The reason for that is because so that people who are down there don't get to see what the sun is actually doing, which is not circling their heads. Now I will admit that for six months, I'm sorry, yeah, six weeks a year, Antarctica does get full sun. I've seen it um, on these webcam footages, but it is not, the, they don't have a view of the sun. So I know it doesn't make sense and I fully admit that we, this is something that we need to research because somehow when the sun leaves to the northwest and circles all the way on the other side of the earth in its daily path, somehow it is remaining bright in Antarctica. Now, is that because of something in the atmosphere? Is it being some sort of reflection? Not sure. Uh, but it does prove two things. A, that it needs to be studied. B, that it's not a globe. Because if it was a globe, you would simply see the sun do a complete circle above your head. Now we can see this flag straight in front of us. Tell me, when, why don't we see, where's the shadow of the flag at the, I don't know, what would you say? Probably from seven o'clock till midnight as far as a clock, we don't ever see the shadow there. See how the shadow starts at about five o'clock, or no, that's about seven o'clock, and rotates counterclockwise. We see it come all the way up to about one and disappear every single time. That again comes down to if they're lying to you, there's a reason. If things are real, you would have a 24 hour webcam. Think of the ISS. We don't get to see 24 hours of footage from space. Just like we don't get to see 24 hours of footage from Antarctica, but 
you can watch pandas for 24 hours, or you can watch the grave of Andy Warhol. And so what I'm saying, as I've said a million times, is use your head. Why wouldn't they show you 24-hour footage from Antarctica? It's because it doesn't match what's in textbooks because it's not true what's in textbooks because it is not a continent on the bottom of a big ball, mostly because you can't live on a ball. There's a lot going for the flat Earth. Yeah, absolutely. There's an awful lot going for it because I've analysed every facet and detail of the flat Earth with the exception of Antarctica, which I'm looking into now and finding out that... um, Everybody has marched through that place. By everyone, what what exactly do you mean? Like, everyone has been to Antarctica? Because it gets about 40,000 visitors a year, which I think is an extremely high number. But let's say they do get that many. Take that over the 7 million people, sorry, 7 billion people in the world. And the percentage of people that go to Antarctica is 0.0000058%. So you're right. Everyone has marched through that place. But, but you'd have thought that these people who were pushing the idea that Antarctica doesn't exist would have done basic research first. So, I have now shown you several reasons, Tiger Dan, as to why, once I had done the research, I believe that Antarctica is not a continent on the bottom of a globe. You called me a liar, you called me stupid, and so let's see if you can admit you were wrong or continue making claims based on zero research and zero evidence. I'm willing to admit when I'm wrong about something. And I think that it's the case that a lot of the 90% of these flat earthers out there, they get something wrong, they get proven wrong, and they just ignore you and con- continue to spout the lies, which is what I'm seeing taking place. They'll just continue lying to you. And uh, I'm not about lies, I'm about truth. And if I find something that contradicts the official narr- the official flat earth narrative then I'm going to point it out and show you because I'm not about lying to people so yeah that's where I'm at at the moment I'm just really annoyed about this Antarctic thing Uh, it does exist it really is a, a continent and it it's down there it's measurable and it's not the outer perimeter of the flat earth so something else is and I'll continue to look into it and I'll get back to you as I come up with more information. So so hopefully you have seen that I've given you enough evidence now that you can take back the claim that you made that uh, Antarctica must be and is a measurable continent at the bottom of a globe. It's not, and for many reasons, and I hope you can see that. Just looking at the screen now, Watch this again. Keep an eye on the clock up there, the date and time in the upper left-hand corner, and watch the sun as it comes across the horizon, but it comes from the northeast, goes to the northwest, because in Antarctica, the sun is going to come into your view and then leave your view as it does its circle, its daily path throughout the flat plain that we call Earth.